Hello everyone and peace of Christ to all of you. Today we are going to teach you good manner. Good manner is very important, especially if you are going to convert to Islam or you are a Muslim. We don't accept. Let us make it clear. We don't accept anything except having holes in the narrative. This is the only thing is allowed. And as you see in this cloth here, the Prophet is a very conservative man. He will not allow the women to show her face, but he designed a special dress with holes in the narrative. So Prophet Muhammad who taught people how to be people of good manner, how much his manner was good. Now not, we will not question how many rape he did, etc. But today we have Dr. Yasser Kadi, sorry, Dr. Hall in the narrative previously, Yasser Kadi is going to explain to us how the Prophet, he was practicing his good manner. Uh, and I hope that this will be not a great example for men in real life. Go ahead, hold in the narrative. Yeah. And uh, this is an incident that the books of uh, Tafsir mention more than the books of Sirah because the Quran was revealed uh, for this incident and therefore uh, the books of, of Tafsir mention this story. Uh, and once again, so with Maria, there's all of these mini stories that are problematic from one perspective and this is also one of them and again I reiterated it better you hear it from me than from others and also this is in the Quran so you can't really like this is a verse in the Quran it is reported in uh, al tabari uh, that and many other books of tafsir that one day Hafsa uh, went away and she was not going to be uh, at home and so uh, the process called Maria to the house of Hafsa and it so happened that Hafsa returned earlier than she was supposed to and she saw Maria leaving her house. So she became extremely enraged and she became irritated uh, with the Prophet ﷺ and she said that Ya Rasulullah, uh, is that how much, uh, how do I translate this, respect you have for me or is that what you think of me uh, in my house and on my day? And so the Prophet ﷺ continued to placate her and calm her down uh, and she basically was very emotional and until eventually she made the Prophet ﷺ, uh, promise to never ever see Maria again and the Prophet ﷺ said I have made her haram for myself okay okay khalas I give up basically Maria is haram for me I will never see Maria I swear to Allah by Allah I'm never going to see Maria again and he told Hafsa, he made Hafsa basically keep this between the two of them and he said, do not tell Aisha. And this show... <laughs> what a story. What a prophet. And look, he did not tell us what happened. So the prophet, he called Mary the Copt to come to his house. Okay, what happened? What happened inside the house? And then his wife, she came and she saw Mary the Copt leaving the house. Are you sure? This is the story? The story doesn't say that. <laughs> He, she cut him in the bed. That's why she said to him, in my bed, in my house, you filthy coward son of Muta. And look, they are talking about the best man they have. And that best man, he, when the wife go away, he called the maid who is not lawful for him. You see, the Muslims, when they try to give you some information, they say to you in the Quran, it says, it is lawful for you to have sex with whatever you own in your hand. But the Quran make it clear, the one you own in your hand is the prisoners of war. Mary the Kopchi is not a prisoner of war. She is a slave who was given to him as a gift. If you go to any verse in the Quran and you can read the interpretation made by Muslims, by the Muhammadan, by all the holes of the narrative doctors, you will see they will say to you that the one you own in your hand are the captive. Captive of war. So the Quran make it clear that a captive of war, you can rape them. But there is nowhere in the Quran it says that a woman, she is your slave, not from captive of war, you can rape her. Or you can sleep with her. Or she is lawful for you. So Islam make it clear that you can rape women who you kidnap them from their husbands, but you cannot rape women who they are just your servants. Mary the Cot is his servant. And just to show you how filthy this cult, there's a story 
about uh, a woman I posted the hadith re reference this is the, like not only one hadith uh, in the in the uh, video info you can click and you can open them but this is the book of al musanna page number 550 but this hadith has exist in many places it's not only one they are giving you reference of many hadith about a muslim woman she did marry she marry not sleep she wanted to marry not to sleep with the guy remember with a slave she owned the caliphate Umar he did beat the hell of her and he killed her according to some reference some they say because she is single he did only give her 100 whip so look at this filthy I'm going to click translate to English let us see how we translate I think we have to click here all right so look how filthy this religion is Muhammad he can sleep with the maid who is not a slave and she he, she is not married to him a woman a Muslim woman she cannot sleep with her slave even if she is going to marry him and actually she cannot marry a slave do you see how filthy this cult is and there is some people they believe that you know the Muslim told them that Islam make people equal Abu Bakr told us that Muhammad etc blah 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 from 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 okay that a woman she have servant get married from her and it was said to her this is a translation in Google as you know and said um, you know I mean translation is very horrible here and she said well you know isn't it the Quran says it is lawful for you to have relationship with your hand on processed or you know the one you own them by your hand they took her to the caliphate Omar and Omar he said to that to her how you do that who allow you to do that and as a result of this he did beat her 100 times you cannot do that a man he can sleep with his slave this woman she is not even sleeping with the slave she married the slave yet she cannot do that do you see the irony do you see the how filthy this cult is why because she is a free woman and he's a black man and this is an insult to the black man, to the white man, to see a white woman marrying a black man, and he is his her, her slave. Now the translation here is not too much good, so I'm going to go to the Arabic page. It says here, uh, "An Bakr from uh, from Bakr." It says, "Tazawajat imra'a abduha, faqila laha, faqalat, alayhi sallahu yaqul, wa ma malakat aymanakum, fahada." Yamluku Yamini. Isn't it Allah? She said to him, she said to him, okay, I marry a slave, but isn't it Allah? He says, and uh, it's lawful for you what you own by your hand. And here they say, and she married him without a proof that this is true. And then, you know, they, they ask her, how you do that? She said, well, I am a Thayyib, which means she is uh, not virgin. You know, she have a previous uh, relationship or marriage. And I have this, uh, decided to marry this guy. So they took her to Umar, the caliphate. And then people, they gather from like maybe hundreds or thousands. And they ask him to judge on her. And then Umar, he said, by the book of Allah, I'm going to punish you 100 uh, 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 lash for each one of you. And then he said, Any woman, she marry her slave or she marry without permission of her father she is a fornicator can you believe it so Muhammad he can sleep with his slaves which is a cheating 
the wife she leave the house Muhammad he called this the slave who is not owned by his hand she is not considered she is just a slave not a captive there's there's a slave who is a captive and there's a slave who is bought by money the Quran never said anywhere I challenge all the Muslim to show me where in the Quran it says you can have sex with a slave you bought him by money or by, her, by you bought her same time not only it's not lawful for Muhammad to do that this is a cheating the man he have many many wives why he need more why he's after the, the servant what a man he want I took this part here the one I copy in the screen and I took it to Google translation you can do the same you know this is the page it's in the info you can copy the same part or you can like you know in order to get better translation just like uh, copy part by part so you can get better translation in Google when it get long it got it get lost Omar he said whichever woman marries her slave or marries without guardian she is an adulterer this is Google translation how come if the Prophet he sleep with the slave she is not he's not married he's a good man and how in the world people who believe in a prophet they believe he is the most decent person they think there is nothing wrong in this man asking the servant to come to the house so he can sleep with her as soon as the wife she left the house and uh, this is an incident that the books of uh, tafsir mentioned more than the books of sira because the quran was revealed uh, for this incident and therefore uh, the books of, of tafsir mention this story uh, and once again so with maria there's all of these mini stories that are problematic from one perspective and this is also one of them and again i reiterated it better you hear it from me than from others and also this is in the quran so you can't really like you notice here you better hear it from me than from others because this is this is bad this is our prophet we have a fornicator who speak against fornication we have a fornicator who say that he's a prophet and he is the one who stoned people to death for fornication so the fornicator who practice fornication every day he stone you to death for fornication but yet he practice it as a lifestyle like this is a verse in the quran it is reported in uh, tabari uh, that and many other books of tafsir that one day hafsa uh, went away and she was not going to be uh, at home and so uh, the process called maria to the house of hafsa and it so happened that Hafsa returned. It so happened. It so happened, Hafsa, how dare you? I mean, he did not, he, you know, I mean, wait until he, you know, she's done and she go. And you see here, the coward, he did not say what happened. I mean, okay, she called her to the house to do what? To clean the house, to make coffee. They are ashamed of their prophet. They are ashamed of the story and now he's trying to cover the story because it's there anyway we are talking about it he's not saying he said you know you better hear it from me they heard it from us before you you coward we force you to talk about it the same as the holes of the narrative so this is a prophet of god who will go after you he will kill you if you do fornication but he is the biggest fornicator ever. His name is the Fornication Prophet. And we were in short video with Mr. Dr. Holes in the Narrative. Previously name was Yasser Kadi. Thank you very much for joining us. Please download the video and share it. And for those who are asking about taking calls from Muslims, we did not stop taking calls from Muslims. You have a wrong idea. We said if a Muslim were willing to debate us, I will take him anytime. All right? Anytime. We don't stop taking call from Muslims. Just find me holes in the narrative doctor and I will take his call anytime. Deal? We did not stay, stop taking calls, but I don't want to waste my time just speaking to kids. At least when we speak, I want somebody he knew what he's talking about.
all right so get me a hole in the narrative doctor any hole in the that doesn't matter what his name yes Kadi, susu fufu i don't care just get me any hole in the narrative doctor and i will be happy to take his call anytime and now if there is a hole in the narrative here exists he would like to call me i will open my skype for you specifically for your holes as you see we had too many holes in this dress all right so i want to say thank you we want to keep this video short as we promised the indonesian to make videos for them almost every day so they can translate and share we cannot make it five minutes as you see but i think this is short still good thank you very much for being here we will try to go back again live on air maybe today if we can it's very cold here and my uh, windows are covered by ice so i can't even see through the windows so thank you very much i don't want to have holes in the narrative of my windows it's cold already and the prophet is a decent man he can have sex with his servant but you cannot do that and if the woman she wanna do that we are going to kill her or we are going to whip her because a woman she cannot do that this is not decent it's decent for the man to do that but it's not decent for the women to do that do you see that the double standard of this filthy cult do you see how garbage this man is may Allah bless your holes and may Allah bless the narrative of the Prophet for the blessing of Allah is holes of the narratives. See you and take care. God bless.